okay in this part of our topic what we will be doing we'll be covering um, four main things uh, heat capacity specific heat capacity latent heat and specific latent heat what do they all mean what's the purpose of it okay so let's start first of all by the basic understanding of it when you speak of heat capacity as the name say, states capacity how much it can take and so we can say that heat capacity let me write that down as a definition All right so heat capacity amount of heat energy to change or get a body or mass increase in temperature by one degree Celsius a one degree Celsius or one Kelvin okay one Celsius and one Kelvin are equal remember that one degree Celsius is equals to one Kelvin but one Kelvin is not on the scale of one degree Celsius all right now for heat capacity and specific heat capacity the difference is that when we speak of specific we need to be specific of what we are talking about and so with specific heat capacity we're talking of a kilogram so it's the same almost the same definition except it's it's talking about one kilogram of mass increased by one degree celsius okay that is in summary time this one here it is just for a mass to increase by one degree celsius all right so that's the difference this is talking about one kilogram so let's see where do we work with this example um, energy for this one here will be equal energy is equals to mass times specific capacity times to change in temperature all right so consider a a, a say warm water bottle of containing 150 kilograms of say cold water or cool water at 10 degrees Celsius it's not ice it is cold right so I want you to calculate the amount of the amount of energy energy required to raise the temperature temperature of the water to 80 degrees Celsius so let's see what you have been given okay so in in this problem here I always look at the equation we are talking within the same state it is not changing state it is only increasing temperature or decreasing temperature that is the key point so since we have identified that it's only changing temperature this is the equation which we'll be using in a change state all right so what you do is your state what you've been given i have been given that we're talking of one kilogram okay it is originally at 10 degrees Celsius and it raised to 80 degrees Celsius. All right. So we put here the mass is equals to 150 kilograms. The change in temperature is from 
10 to 80. But you will not set 10 minus 80. You want to set the big one minus the small one, which gives us 70 degrees Celsius increase in temperature or, set, or 70 Celsius having been increased. Now, calculate the amount of heat energy. Well, we need the specific capacity of water. Why the specific capacity of water? Because it is within the state of water. All right, it is not changing state. So we need to know the amount of energy the water can take before it changes state. So the specific capacity of water is 4200 joules per kilogram Celsius or per Kelvin. Okay, now you would usually be given these values. So there's no need to memorize them. All right, so we come now and we look at the equation. Amount of energy will be mass, specific heat capacity, then the change in temperature. The mass is 150 kilograms, which we have there, times the specific heat capacity, joules per kilogram Celsius, times the change in temperature, which is 70 degrees Celsius. So, we do our calculations. We get our calculator and we see 150 times 42000 times 70 and that gives us that big value so we get 4410000 joules notice the kilograms will cancel and the celsius will cancel we don't usually write this big number so i want you to use what you have learned so this is 44 times 10 to the 6 power joules. If you don't want to use this, you then say 44 times 10, or not times, ah, that would be good, or 44 mega joules. M stands for the 10 to the 6 power. Okay? Or we put 4.5. Four, four, four point four times ten mega joules because this will give us back the four five five four. All right, so we end up with that. So that is how you calculate the amount of energy that it is required for it to change temperature, not change state. Okay, this is the amount of energy it would require to observe to be a. Um, that the cool water we need to take for it to become still a liquid but with a temperature up to 80. Now, the amount of energy it would release from here back to 10 would be the same. What does that mean? That if you have a water or a container of water of 80 kilograms, no, 80 at 80 degrees Celsius, and that's water is to be left to cool down to 10 degrees Celsius and let's see so we're talking of 150 kilograms the same thing then how much energy will be lost to the atmosphere it will be the same as this because it nothing has been added or or again it is just being lost to the atmosphere the um, heat energy okay so this is with specific heat capacity so um specific Okay, this next problem is in respect to this same question here, or the follow-up. How much energy will it take for this quantity of water to change to steam? Okay, we're not worried about what temperature it is. We're just worried about how much energy will it take to be changed to steam. So let me change the problem here and reward it because our, our end of the day is to combine the two, the two problems. So... How much energy will be needed to convert 150 kilograms of boiling water to steam? It will not go through a temperature change, it will just go through a change in state. And this is known as latent heat. 
okay and because we're talking of vaporization then this is what you will be using amount of energy is is equal to a latent heat of vaporization times the mass okay so um, the latent heat of vaporization you are given for water uh, so latent heat of vaporization is two three zero 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 joules per kilogram notice it doesn't say anything about temperature just per mass so you have the mass now to equal to 150 kilograms so you will substitute these two values into your equation usually you are given this if not you may be asked to find this right that doesn't mean you will get this same value so you take two zero 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 joules per kilogram times 150 kilograms when you multiply those two you end up with 150 times two three zero zero one two three equals give us that big long value okay so let me write that down on our paper three five zero three four five okay i am joules or 345 mega joules or 3.45 times 10 to the second power mega joules it's the same thing now note here this is the amount of energy it requires for 150 kilograms of water to become steam okay so amount of energy required of ice to become water now or water to become ice consider now this is very unique and i want you to pay keen attention to this piece here as this kind of question always comes up in your cc um how much energy will be needed or lost to convert 150 kilograms of cold water to ice all right so what happens here is that the latent heat of solidification is three four zero 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 joules per kilogram i want this amount of water to be turned to ice i'm not interested at what temperature the water is i just want to know the amount of energy for it to change to ice how much is being lost not gain in this case in this case it is gaining because it is becoming more volatile in this case it is being lost because it is cooling down all right so take note getting hotter getting cooler or cold so equation still it applies energy is equal to latent heat of solidification times the mass which is equals three four zero 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 joules per kilogram times 150 kilograms so take our calculator we say 150 times 340123 equals we get 51000000 joules or 51 mega joules or 5.1 times 10 mega joules okay so that is what we get now look at this this is less energy than this okay so we get 150 we get 5.1 megajoules here we get 345 megajoules here we get 51 megajoules it takes so here we can see 
that here we have more energy at this at the changing of the state compared to this one here okay and so here is where the concept of bonding comes in with chemistry and you start to combine them I want you to take note also that if I was to take cold water and I want to get that water boiling that amount of energy will be less compared to changing that water to steam what does that mean let's see remember here we have 150 kilograms so let's say that we have 150 kilograms of cold water I want that to heat up to 100 degrees Celsius how much energy will it take well heat energy is equals mass plus vehicle capacity times the change in temperature the mass is still 150 kilograms the specific capacity of water bring the old problem that we had is it specific capacity of water here it is we say consistent 42 we take 42 zero, zero, joules per kilogram celsius times 100 degrees celsius because that is the change in temperature it will undergo so punching to, to our calculator we get 150 times 4200 times 100 and that gives us 63 million so you get 63 okay joules or 63 mega joules note that amount of energy note this amount of energy okay so it takes more energy for that water to change state okay that same mass of water to change state compared to get that water from cold water to 100 degrees celsius just to boil okay so it this takes this so i want you to go okay so let's put that as a question as a forum so after viewing this video i hope you can analyze the questions carefully and use them to apply okay so okay in this topic in this video we'll be covering the concept of this first one where we got a a body of water which was at 10 degrees celsius to get to heat it to 80 degrees celsius change in temperature without any changing in state and then we got it to change state how much energy would be required so now we're going to take that same problem modify it slightly and combine the concept we have a container of water which has 150 kilograms and that is at say 10 degrees celsius it is heated to reach the state of steam and boils okay so i want to know how much energy does it take to go from this point to become completely steam all right so what do we need we need to find the amount of energy for it to change temperature which is energy equals mass specific capacity times the change in temperature for it to change state now we just need the energy latent heat of vaporization times the mass so therefore the total amount of energy total will be mass specific capacity times change in temperature plus the latent heat of vaporization times the mass Notice how the equation can get more complicated, all right? We could factorize out the m if we want, or we can leave it there. That's up to you. So, what is it that we know? We, de we do know from the concept that the specific capacity of water is 4200 joules per kilogram Celsius. We know that the latent heat of vaporization is... Um, three four zero one two three joules per kilogram right 
and we know that the mass is still at 150 kilograms now why is it that we include mass here and mass here well because it it is this mass that will change temperature and that same mass will then be converted to, to a different state so that amount of mass needs to be multiplied by the amount of heat of by the latent heat of vaporization so we put into our into our calculations mass 150 kilograms times specific heat capacity part 200 joules per kilogram per celsius times the change in temperature well it went from 10 to here which will be 100 degrees celsius we are talking of 90 degrees celsius plus the latent heat of vaporization joules per kilogram times the mass which is still 150 kilograms because it doesn't change and so that becomes our equation okay it is still a small equation don't worry about that piece there so we take our calculator and we punch in those values into it so we get 150 times 4200 times 90 equals plus open bracket 340000 times 150 this bracket equals that amount so let me write that amount of energy which is 1077000000 joules okay so that's the amount of energy it will be required for that 10 for that 150 kilograms of cold water which is at 10 degrees to be converted completely to steam so notice how we combine the the equations all right to shorten this up we can get 107.7 mega joules okay or we can say 1.077 times 10 to the second power mega joules is the same thing all right so this is how you combine our equations and you can get longer all right so um don't worry how long this gets just remember this is for a change in temperature this is for a change in state i need to have a change in temperature uh, before it melts yes can you change, have a change in temperature after it has boiled yes all right so um all that, that is really happening is that the vapor is getting heated up more and so the molecules start to vibrate even faster which means it requires much more energy all right